Hi, this is Tasha Cleveland with Latitudes Gallery, and we are in our final weekend of Makeover May. If you have not already entered, you've got one more day to submit your room photo for your chance to win a $1,000 Latitudes gift card. The winner will be drawn at random on Tuesday live. So get over there, submit your room view. Today's entry is Let's see, today's entry, we are working on a living room. And let me jump over to Photoshop. So this is Sarah's room. And Sarah submitted this photo of her sectional sofa. So the issue with sectional sofas is that often you are dealing with a very elongated shape. Now we looked at this before, I believe it was Gail's room where she had that big L-shaped sectional. This is a little bit different. This is a um, sofa with a chaise. And this is pretty common. Um, a lot of people don't quite know how to balance this out either. And it can be a little tricky because it isn't a regular sectional. Regular sectional, you want a lot of, a lot of balance up there on the wall. This is still really long. It's still a four, four person sofa. And so we also want a large enough piece to balance that out visually. Now, most often my rule of thumb for a sectional is um, to have a 30 by 90 um, or possibly a 40 by 80 inch piece. And that often balances out the visual weight of that sectional. So let's take a look at some choices for Sarah's room. Now, initially, when I was looking at this space, okay, first of all, Sarah, I adore your rug. I want to just roll around on it. Um, it looks incredibly soft and lush. And I really would love to accent this beautiful aspect of your space onto your wall. So initially, I grabbed some images of water because I thought that that would mimic it the most and kind of tie everything together. But once I pulled this one, it felt a little bit uh, repetitive, a little bland. There really wasn't enough um, different happening here. So that knocks that one out. Let's look at this one. The pier image has a lot of these blue colors to it. It also has the brown flooring, which I like a lot. Uh, and I do love the silky mirror of the image. But as far as color palette, I think we can keep looking. This one is really cool. It's very focused on that lighthouse and the birds. So you've got to love those <laughs> lighthouse and birds, um, especially for a 30 by 90 inch piece. And I don't know enough about Sarah to say that's the winner. So let's keep going. This one has some foggy, silky water that looks pretty cool. And it's got some of those richer blue tones in the back, as well as the floor colors. I like that pretty well. But as many pictures as I put on Sarah's wall, nothing was really landing for me. It wasn't really that lock in that I always look for. So when I'm selecting an image for a space, I feel a sensory experience when I find the piece that just locks in. And even though I thought these pieces were gonna lock in for me with her color palette and the style of her space, I kept going and kept going and, and none of them really locked for me. Um, so I want you to pay attention for that lock as we go through these images. This image is gorgeous. I believe it's Tunnels Beach in Kauai. And I really like the dark blues up in the sky. And once I got to this image, I was starting to see what I was seeking in the images. And that is white clouds. So the white clouds bounced off of or contrasted with the blue rich sky mimicked the floor just enough without it being the total subject of the artwork. So we were getting closer when we got to this one. Let's see what else there is. This one I really liked. This one I started to have that sensory lock in. And so notice if your body had that same response when this one came up. It has a little bit of the brown and that feels really good. It's a nice balance. And then the waves crashing created this similar experience to the floor. So I liked that one a lot. <laughs> and then when I found this one, it was the ah uh, that I was looking for. So 
this Yosemite image, there's something about the gray that I'm seeing on uh, these mountaintops. And I think there's bits of snow that kind of feel like the, the rug highlight spots of white. And you've got those white puffy clouds on that blue sky. That's what I was looking for. So for me, this was the ah uh, that I was looking for. This was that lock. Uh, let's keep going and see if there's something that I liked better. Um, this one was really close, but overall I was really looking for more of this really rich blue color. And so this one wasn't as tight of a lock for me, but really, really good. This one is gorgeous. Ah, and I still really like that image there. And the Tahoe, I was getting close with the Tahoe, but once I found the Yosemite image, that was really the win for me. So I'm gonna narrow it down to my top picks of this pier image. It was actually, this was my first pick. This is the first one I dropped on this room. It's still really good. Um, I would love to know what your favorite image is. So drop it in the comments. Um, this one I'm really loving as well as mm, the Yosemite picture. Mm -hmm. Still my favorite. And Rincon, those would be my top picks. So if I had to narrow it down to an ocean-based and a land-based, Aha, it's that one and it's that one. Those two are my favorites. So now let's look at sizing this. So these are a one to three ratio. We've talked about the ratio before. We've talked about how the ratio is really, uh, you want to take what's left of the wall. Now let me hide this so I can explain this a little bit better. The ratio is what is left above the furniture and what shape is that? What This is the wall we're working with. Now, when you're selecting art for a space, you always want to balance out the furniture below it. The reason is, even if you have a huge room, you are still working with individual spaces. These are spaces that you are, that say is your, your lounge space or your dining space or your kitchen space. So each of these sections needs to be defined. Often we define them just like Sarah did with a rug. A rug will define that sitting area. The artwork also defines the sitting area. So you want to size the artwork for each of these little sections of a room. And so when we look at what's above this sofa, you have, again, you've got, it's kind of in between because this is a long sofa. So I could go either way on a one by three ratio or a two to one ratio. Either one I think would look really good. And I think I'm gonna go with a one by three. So let's take a look at this one. Still my top pick. I don't know. Something, just something. I think it's the gray in this one that I'm liking a lot because it really ties in with that sofa really well. And it just sort of grounds the whole space. So for our land-based image, Yosemite for the win. Let's take a look. So if I were to estimate, that's probably close. Yeah, I am happy with a one by three. So uh, let's, let me pull it in just a little bit more, just so that it's a little bit more accurate for you guys. I'd like to give the best example I can. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. So the other element of selecting artwork for a space is breathing room. Breathing room is really important. Breathing room allows your art to breathe. It allows everything to breathe. So when you're looking at placing things into a space, you always want to balance out the negative visual space with the positive visual space. There's always a balance, okay? So when we're looking at this artwork, we want a balance of space around the art. You want breathing room. So we're not going to just, so you can see what I'm saying, we're not gonna size it as big as this wall will take because that would be overpowering first of all, but also 
you don't want it crowded either towards the ceiling or towards the sofa. You need breathing room all around it. So let me go back. Ow. Let's see if it'll let me. Yes, good. <laughs> I don't have to start over. Yay. So we want that breathing room around it. Now, even though my breathing room is not balanced, it is not exactly the same below and above, that is intentional. I do not like having artwork floating up in the middle of the room, up high on the wall. You are down here. You are eye level looking at your artwork and that is important it is important how you're viewing your art you don't want to be like looking up <laughs> at the artwork when you're experiencing your space so when you hang your art you want it to be 60 to 66 inches on vertical center that means the center of the image up and down vertical center you want that between 60 and 66 inches how do you decide that that is going to be based on the average viewing height of the people in the space. If it's a commercial space, you're gonna to wanna to go around 63, split that difference, go right in the middle. If you are a family of tall people, then you're gonna to wanna to go towards the 66. If you're a family of shorter in stature people, you are going to wanna to go closer to the 60. It's all dependent on the average viewer. Okay, the other element is how does it connect to what's below it? So in this case, we have a sofa below it. We don't necessarily want it to be all the way up here, even if that is 66, because you want it to connect to what it's next to. So my rule of thumb when I'm hanging art above a sofa or a table is around eight to 12 inches of breathing room below the artwork before the piece of furniture. So in this case, I'm gonna go towards about a 12 inch space. I do like that spacing a little bit more on this one, a little more breathing room. And that's because it's darker at the bottom. I need a little more space to balance that darkness out. If I were to go down much further, it would feel too heavy down there. But if I am going to wiggle that guy up to about, let's say about a foot right there, we're landing pretty close to 60 to 66 inches on vertical center. Now, it's okay, it's good that there's more space between the art and the ceiling. That is okay. You do not want your art all the way up there, okay? So the other element is now that there is art on the wall, Beforehand, Sarah did not have art on the wall, and so this mirror felt more appropriate. But now that there is art on the wall, we want to give that breathing room on the sides as well, not just what's visually just around the image, but also what's what are the walls next to it. And so I would suggest that Sarah relocate that mirror. Now, let's talk about mirrors for just a second. A lot of times people think that mirrors are a good like filler when you don't really know what to do. And here is how I decide if a mirror is appropriate. You want the mirror to reflect something beautiful. So a mirror is appropriate if you're gonna hang it on a wall that is directly facing a gorgeous view. Then you've got double the view, it's great. You do not want a mirror at the end of a hallway so that you're watching yourself walk down the hall all the time. That's not a very pleasant experience. So keep in mind, what is that mirror reflecting? That tells you where to put it. So now back to Sarah's room. We've got visual space around the artwork and that feels much more appropriate for her minimalist style. It feels clean and sleek. And so I'm really happy with that. I'm going to just throw a shadow on there so that you can see what that looks like. So it just feels like it's in the space a little bit more. Hey, turn on, thank you. Okay, so that is our land-based image. I'm really happy with it. For just one more second, let's drop on our alternate image of an ocean-based image. And let's take a look at how that looks. 
I'm still, I still really like this one as well. So this again, artwork is a personal experience. I can tell you what looks good in the room, but I can't tell you how it's going to make you feel. And that is a very personal choice. And that is why you decide what your artwork will be, because that is what makes you happy in the spaces that you live in. And that is our goal. So thank you so much for watching another live room rendering from Latitudes Gallery. If you have not entered yet, please jump to latitudesgallery.com. I will drop it down at the bottom, latitudesgallery.com to enter. You have one more day. Get that in, get that photo in, and we will select a winner to, on Tuesday, June 1st, live. So don't miss it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys.